Why can't every game be as easy as the Eagles last night? Hi everyone, Al DeMarco here. This is going to be your Tuesday video report. I've got to tell you, the NFL gambling gods were finally smiling on me last night because after getting consecutive backdoor losses when Baltimore failed in the final minute against Atlanta last Thursday and Indianapolis failed to protect the lead winning by six as I'm laying six and a half against Cincinnati as the Bengals scored with two and a half minutes to play in Sunday's game. It was nice to get a blowout win, although I got to tell you, when it was like 28 nothing, I'm sitting there going, can Washington possibly come back and score enough points to get the back door in this game? <laughs> you never feel comfortable after consecutive backdoor losses. I also mentioned in yesterday's video report that if not for the fact of losing with the Colts on Sunday, I would have made the Eagles my biggest play of the season. Another rare 30 dime play of which I'm 5-0 and in the NFL the past three years combined. But I didn't because, as I mentioned, I thought it would have been irresponsible to do so because after winning the 15 dime playing college basketball on Northwestern on Friday night and following that up with a 15 dime college football winner with Kentucky on Saturday, I needed to win that 15 dime play on Indianapolis so I could step you up the ladder. Because as I explained yesterday, the key to expanding bankrolls, once you have somebody else's money and you're playing with your man's money or your sports books money, you've got to be able to press the action to take shots. That's how you expand your bankroll. It would have been irresponsible, however, for me to do that after losing the Colts. I still made it a very strong 15-dime play, 28-14-3 and three with them in the NFL over the past three years now. Now, do I have any regrets? Absolutely not. Because the bottom line, it was a 15-dime winner, hit three out of four 15-dime plays from Friday through Monday, had a winning week, and put some money in the pocket of you and me. Took it away from them. That's good. I've given them too much money over the year. Um... And that's all that really matters. You can't lament the losses. You can't celebrate the wins. You can't say, what if? Or I coulda, shoulda, woulda. No place for that. And the fact is, the Eagles were a nice win last night. But you know what? It's Tuesday. It's the start of a new betting week. You put it out of your mind. It doesn't matter what Michael Vick did last night because he's not going to do it again tonight for us. College football tonight, you've got Temple in Ohio. Looked at the weather report. Looks like it's a miserable day in Philadelphia. Ugh. Do I miss living there? <laughs> no way. Uh, rain, probably rain at game time and about 50 degrees. Temple in revenge, great play at home. But keep in mind, this Ohio team, despite the fact their starting quarterback, Boo Jackson, is probably not going to play. And they're going to go with Bates, the backup who's seen limited action this year. Um, you know, good defense, a team that can put points on the board. They like to run their version of a pistol attack. Uh, you know, this is a big, big number. I'm just not sure here in this particular contest. I lean a little toward Ohio, but not enough to put my own money on it. College basketball, free pick coming up in just a moment on Butler and Louisville. I mean, I came this close to actually wagering it on myself. Also considered maybe taking uh, Florida at home against Ohio State. But, you know, this Ohio State team has four starters back from last year's squad, and it's a physical team and a very talented freshman class. Uh, Billy Donovan's Gators, a lot of talent on paper, but have they produced the past couple of years? Five starters back, but you know, that's the old one. Well, they got five starters back, but they weren't any good last year, so it doesn't really matter. So I stayed away from that, especially with the Gators as a three and a half point choice. Instead, my best bet tonight, and the only play I'm personally playing, is in the NBA on Memphis and Portland. You've got a Grizzlies team that's lost three in a row overall. You've got a Memphis team that's lost seven straight at home against Portland. You've got a Trailblazers team coming in here that has also been struggling of late, losing three of its last four. Memphis is a one point favorite in this one. I think it's the best bet on the board, hands down, and that's the game I'm wagering on tonight. As far as as your free play goes, I'm going to uh, back the Butler Bulldogs, getting uh, a point or two at uh, Louisville. Of course, Louisville tonight, after 54 years, I think it was, of play in Freedom Hall, they uh, debuted their new on-campus facility, or as close to on-campus as you can get, 22,000 seat KFC Yum Center. Where are you going tonight? Hey, I'm going over to the Yum Center. I can see it now. The Yum Center. Don't ask me. Hey, doesn't Louisville have Papa John's Stadium for its football team, too? So it's a little brand marketing here. The Yum Center. I like that. I don't know. It's not the Kibble Center, but the Yum Center. Anyway, um, listen, this Louisville team was 20-13 and 13 last year, and they lost in the first round of the tournament to California. They lost their top three scores from last year. Right now, 
you know, going into, if you believe the published reports, Rick Pitino only has settled on two of his five starters for tonight, and the other three he'll decide sometime before tip-off tonight. This is not a team that has a lot of talent coming back. Injuries, transfers that were ineligible, this is not going to be a very good Louisville team. Now, Butler, of course, 16th ranked in the nation. You remember the last time you saw the Butler Bulldogs play, right? Came within a half-court shot of beating Duke in the national title game. 12-1 straight up on the road last year. Opened up with a uh, victory against a NAIA uh, cupcake, uh, Marion, from Indianapolis, 83-54. And I like that. Even though they played a cupcake, I like the fact that they at least have a game under their belts as opposed to Louisville. Um, now, Butler has lost... Um, you know, Gordon Hayward, who was the number seven pick in the draft this past year after leaving school early by the Utah Jazz, but they still have Shelvin Mack back, could be potential player of the year in the conference, 14.1 points a game last year, still have a very good center in Matt Howard, who's six foot eight and can bang on the boards. I think Butler wins this game tonight. I like Butler in this one. That's going to be your free pick. Good luck, everybody, and I'll catch you again on Wednesday.